German Leopard 2 in the Russian-Ukrainian War. Is it necessary or not? As Ukrainian forces run out of Soviet weapons and are replaced by Western ones, this Russian-Ukrainian war is becoming the largest ever confrontation between Russia and Western weapons. But so far, the US and other NATO countries are supplying Ukraine with their obsolete tanks and armored personnel carriers. After all, the same German Leopard 1 tank created in the mid-1960s can hardly seriously compete with the upgraded Russian T-72B3 tank, not to mention the T-90A tank. But it seems that the picture is gradually changing. The Americans have started sending Ukraine their newest M777 howitzers, and Germany has started talking about the possibility of supplying Leopard 2 tanks, the main German tank. In this video, we'll talk about this machine and assess whether it'll be able to adequately resist Russian equipment. The German Leopard 2 has become the main tank in Europe, replacing the American Abrams with similar characteristics, but with a much lower price tag. For example, the penultimate modification of the Leopard 2, the Leopard 2A6, costs $6.79 million, and the Abrams M1A2 SEP is $8.5 million. The British Challenger 2 is already pulling $8.6 million, and the French AM56 Leclerc is not asking for a modest $10 million. However, for the Ukrainian authorities in the situation in which their country finds itself, the cost of the supplied armament is the last thing on their minds. After all, the supply of Western arms to Ukraine is carried out practically for free under a Lend-Lease. That is, we'll give something back someday. For Ukraine, the main thing is whether the Leopard 2 can effectively fight the Russian T-72B3, which is mainly used by the Russian army in the war with the Ukrainians. The Leopard 2 was created to counterattack the Soviet tank Avalanche, the rapid offensive of which was expected by NATO strategists in case of a hypothetical full-scale war in Europe. The main component of this avalanche was the T-72. In short, the Germans were preparing for massive tank battles. As in 1943, near the Russian Prokhorovka, when hundreds of German Tigers fought against hundreds of Russian T-34s in a fierce tank wedge. If you look at the Leopard 2, you immediately find Tiger features. Rational angles of armor slope on the hull and turret are minimal, especially on the early modifications. Looking at all modifications of the tank, up to the A4, you immediately think a box by a box. And only starting with the Leopard 2A5, the Germans began to try to get away from the boxy look somehow. The Leopard 2 is rather bulky and heavy, the length of its hull is 7.7 .7 meters, its width is 3.7 meters, and its height is 2.8 meters. The weight is 63 tons. But everything's not so bad. During the war with the USSR, the machines of the Katz tribe had problems with service life and the power of engines. And the main thing is that the Germans didn't manage to repair their complicated tanks and field conditions. So the mileage of Leopard 2 before overhaul is 10,000 kilometers. The power plant is a turbo diesel with a power of 1,500 horsepower combined in one unit with the hydromechanical transmission. In addition to the high power to weight ratio, the technical solution gives good maintainability. The complete power plant can be replaced even in field conditions in 35 minutes. Excellent performance. The tank also has other advantages. The Leopard 2 has a powerful armament, 120 mm smoothbore gun with modern ammunition and two machine guns. The gun's stabilized in two planes, but there's no automatic loader. That's why there are three men in the crew compartment of the tank, the commander, gunner, and loader. And that's not all. There's a part of ammunition in the rear of the turret. That's why Leopard 2 has such a distinctive silhouette, which can't be confused with any other tank, especially when the turret is deployed across the stern. The niche where the shells lie is equipped with bouncing panels. It's believed that if a shell hits the powder cellar of this design, people have a better chance of surviving. But the tank is equipped with an excellent Zeiss sight, effective fire control system, thermal imaging cameras, providing all-around view for all the crew members, a fire extinguishing system, a multi-layer armor padded from the inner side with anti-shatter mats, the Leopard 2 has been in service since 1979 and belongs to the third generation of tanks. Over the years, it's been improved, re-equipped, and even facelifted. The most recent and current modifications are the 2A5 and 2A6. The latest modification of the 2A7 Plus was made in 2010. 
It's improved the fire control system, added an auxiliary power unit, an auxiliary armament module, digitalization of the turret. The Leopard 2 had its first baptism of fire in the Balkans. During the events on the territory of disintegrating Yugoslavia, German tanks regularly participated in various operations and events, occasionally coming under fire from the enemy. Nevertheless, in all such cases, the enemy soldiers had no serious weapons at their disposal, thanks to which the tanks did not suffer any losses. Then there was Afghanistan. There too, the Leopard 2s served with dignity, although there were serious incidents with them, exclusively when the tanks ran over mines and improvised explosive devices. The most serious losses were when the Turkish Leopard 2s took part in the war in Syria. Total losses amounted to 10 tanks. All of them were destroyed by anti-tank systems. It should be added that Turkey has Leopard 2A4, which have no dynamic protection at all. So if they fire into the lateral or stern projection, they can be reached by the Soviet primitive RPG-7. Now briefly about the main enemy that the Leopard 2 will have to fight if it gets to Ukraine. This is the Russian T-72B3 tank. The T-72 itself appeared in 1973. Since then, it's been upgraded several times. The last version of the T-72B3 appeared in 2011. The Russian tank is much lighter than the German tank, only 46 tons. However, in the machine's first years of production, there was an engine with a power of 840 horsepower. Therefore, the specific power was only 18.3 horsepower per ton. And the Leopard 2, thanks to its 1,500-strong engine, has 23.8 horsepower per ton. That is, the German is sharper than the Russian. But since 2016, the T-72B3 is equipped with an 1,130-horsepower engine. Therefore, the specific thrust immediately jumped to 24.5 horsepower per ton. The Russian tank has a smoothbore 125mm 2A46M5 gun, which is at least as good as the Leopard's 120mm. In addition, the T-72 has an automatic loader, so it has two men in the turret instead of three. This reduces the size of the turret. The T-72B3 compared to the Leopard 2 in general looks like a teenager compared to a grown man. It's more than 17 feet lower and 33 feet shorter. Add to this the rounded shape, optimal for ricocheting enemy shells, good armor, and dynamic protection on early modifications Contact 5, on later modifications Reluctant. So the Leopard 2 has a well-armed, protected, fidgety enemy. We hope that the installed top-notch Zeiss optics and modern electronics will help to aim at the Russian and hit him with a shell. So the equal opponents will meet in Ukraine. But as usual, the success of combat use in case of equality of forces depends on the ability of commanders and specific crews to appropriately use the available material. But the Russians have a distinct advantage. For Ukrainian tankers, the Leopard 2 is almost an unfamiliar beast. The Russian tankers have used their T-72s for thousands of kilometers at the firing ranges. But in any case, Leopard 2 should be in Ukraine. After all, in addition to experience, a great role is played by the motivation of the personnel. The Ukrainians do not lack this. They're fighting for the independence of their country, for their families and homes. What do you think about this? Will the German Leopard 2 help Ukrainians in their war with the Russians? Write about it in the comments below and don't be stingy with the likes if you like our video. It'll help other people see it too. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel as many more interesting reviews of various weapons are waiting for you.